Good evening. I'm your host, Peter Reznicek from ShadowTrader.net, and this is another edition of the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, March 13th, 2022. I titled this video, Calm Before the Storm, obviously because it's a little bit clickbaity, you know, tell, you know, kind of hinting at something big that might be happening, but I th also thought it was an interesting title because the market is calm and yet not calm currently. If you've been trading actively uh, over this past week, you know that market's actually been quite volatile, but in the bigger picture, it's actually kind of calm because as I'm gonna show you shortly, we're caught inside of a large wedge pattern. From a technical analysis standpoint, the market hasn't actually gone anywhere and the range in the bigger picture is actually tightening, even though it is quite volatile uh, intraday. So we're gonna be going over that uh, technical picture. I've also called it calm before the storm because there's a couple of big events on the horizon, one of which has been ongoing, very unfortunate, the situation in Ukraine. And I'm thinking that as time goes on, obviously one of two things is going to happen. The situation can get worse, which I sincerely hope it doesn't for all parties involved, or it could improve drastically very quickly. And I think either of those will have effect on the market. Obviously, I think the, the second one has a little bit more of an effect because the market is already starting to price in this conflict that's been going on for a couple of weeks now. So that's another thing that's on the horizon. And then beyond that, we do have a very, very important FOMC meeting next week, possibly one of the most important in a very, very long time, because it's gonna be the first time that they are actually going to raise rates. We know that for a fact that we're getting a 25 basis point increase in rates, but there is an open door that it could be 50, Probably not, probably given the whole geopolitical situation and uh, Powell not wanting to roil the markets any more than they are now, he probably sticks to the plan and does 25 basis. However, there is always the wild card of the press conference after and what he will say about the pace of the rate hikes going forward. And that oftentimes has the market reacting even more than the actual uh, Fed policy. So the, that is uh, the other thing. So there's all these these three factors as I look at it, the rate hikes, the Ukraine, and the technical that are going on, all of which I have uh, kind of encapsulated in this video and calling it the calm before the storm, right? So let's get into the first part right now. Let's get into the technical, which is gonna be the bigger picture on the daily, but I'm gonna shift gears here just for a second. During the course of the videos, I often talk to you about my weighted AD uh, indicator, right? Um, and just how great it is. I can't tout this thing enough. And people have been writing in constantly saying how much they love it. It's keeping them on the right side of the market. And I usually throw that in the video towards the end or when I'm showing you some day trading stuff or whatever, like we did last week. But I'm going to start with it this week. And I'm going to keep it super brief. If you watch the market on Friday, you trade it on Friday, what did the market do? It was a gap up, pop and flop, and it just kind of sold off steadily to, throughout the course of the day. And notice that the weighted AD here did, did the exact same thing. Basically, you had clear confirmation what was going on here from the uh, weighted sectors and the unweighted sectors. Notice that if you look closely, there was very little divergence between the weighted and the unweighted, meaning that the white line which is the unweighted sectors and the histogram, which is the weighted sectors, they were lockstep with each other the whole time, which tells you that the selling was pretty steady across the board. And again, just basically straight down. This, I just wanted to show you this example because this is how it looks when you have essentially a trending day, when everything is sort of moving in lockstep and everything is, is selling forward. And you can see, if you recall on Friday, there was heavier selling into the close in the last, say, 90 minutes of trade and look at the acceleration here to the downside where it really started to get going and you can see how large the histogram is. So again, you're not gonna just download this and automatically not have another losing day trade or whatever, but 90% I think of playing the intraday game is simply being in the right direction of the broad market on the right side, okay? Certainly if you're trading futures because the futures are the market, but 85% of stocks will also follow the market. And this is really, really important. A lot of people, 
they don't, you know, they make that initial mistake in a day trade where they're just not on the right side of what the market's doing. And I often say the pattern is the last thing because those people are making the mistake of looking at the pattern, meaning the pattern just in their individual stock as the first thing, but really it's context like this that has to be the first thing. And you make sure that you know and understand your context as if it was like a hierarchical, hierarchical checklist, so to speak, where it's like, okay, what is the market doing? Do my internal support it? Okay, now let me look for which stock to trade or which future to trade, right? So I get all these things, all my ducks in a row, and I know, okay, the market is going down, the market is going heavily down, all of the internal supported. I've got all of my dashboard here with my quad supporting it. Okay, do I want to short the ES or do I want to short the, the NQ? Okay, the ES is relatively weak to the NQ today. I'll choose ES. And then, only then, once you have everything lined up, you then look at the pattern and say, okay, is there a trend line break here that I can exploit? Is there this candlestick pattern, that pattern, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really, really important. I think it definitely keeps you on the right side of the market. The link to purchase this is in the description of this video. It's on our website under the stocks tab, and it's also available for trading view. And that link is also uh, in the description uh, of the video. All right, without further ado, let's get into those longer term technicals that I talked about uh, earlier. All right, again, keeping it pretty simple from a technical analysis standpoint, SPX daily, tightening wedge. What does that mean? Very simply, this is the wedge here from the trend lines that are drawn here. This secondary, this is your primary all the way from up here from further back at, into the 4300. But right now we're, we're stuck in this particular triangle here. And that's what I meant about the calm before the storm because it's getting calmer, obviously, as it gets more and more narrow. Not really, obviously, the, the volatility has been big, but the, you know, the range is somewhat tightening. And because of those events on the horizon, could be any one of the three, obviously, it could be a technical break, meaning we fall out of the wedge or break up out of the wedge, some news out of Ukraine, plus we've got the Fed coming in uh, next week, hot and heavy with that rate hike. So all of this is going to be a factor in that if you think the market is wild now or you think there have been some relatively large ranges, just wait because the ranges are about to get larger. Because if we break out of this pattern in either direction, up or down, I think we will see some sort of expansion of range uh, in the S&P. But for now, we are in that pattern, but you know exactly what to be looking for in the week to come as the market digests some of this news, especially on Wednesday, depending on how the market acts uh, in relation uh, to that rate hike. Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind with this particular pattern is the February 24th low. If you recall from past videos, I had said that I believe that low is secure, meaning that it will not be retested. Since then, the market did what we expected. I said, you know, there's potential for a rally. We talked about a trend line break here. But what was interesting about it is that once the trend broke, we didn't go anywhere. We just sort of balanced, fell out. Now it appears we're kind of balancing again. So the big question also next week is, in terms of how the market reacts probably to that uh, Fed rate hike, is will the Feb 24 low be secure? If not, obviously, you know, there's probably a lot uh, more selling coming uh, down the pike because everybody is or I should say has been working from the framework, not everybody, but a lot of individuals working from that framework that this Feb 24 low is secure. So keep that in mind uh, uh, in the uh, week to come as the market uh, digests these big events. Let's move on to the NASDAQ 100. Similar pattern. You can see the triangle here. Very, very similar how the wedge is there. But the one thing I would note about the NDX, and it's not surprising because it's been showing a lot of relative weakness as of late, is the fact that the, this particular line here, which forms the bottom of the wedge, notice that it's a lot flatter than the SPX. The SPX showing some more relative strength. So the SPX line is more like this sort of a, a slope, and this one is more like this sort of a slope. So uh, I think given that, that's actually quite interesting because the fact that it's more flat, what, it, what it's telling us is that this particular low price is closer here uh, to the trend line. So we'll see if, you know, if there's a retest there that could cause, you know, some sellers to get active. Um, and it also means that the uh, proximity to the, uh, you know, secure low that we talked about the Feb 24 is a little bit uh, smaller. It's a little bit closer. So something to watch in the NDX, similar pattern, but overall a bit more bearish, I would say, uh, in, in the bigger picture when you're looking at these dailies uh, in contracts to the SPX. I'd like to end the video this week with a short discussion about trend lines and their 
sheer importance. I touched upon this a little bit in last week's video, and I hope you noticed that it's a recurring theme in all of my technical analysis, in my videos, in my teachings, and you know my trades with my weekly options advisory subscribers. It's a constant recurring theme because it just works and it makes sense. And in order to drive that point home a little bit more this week, I wanted to show you this particular chart, which is a daily chart of Facebook. There's a lot of speculation out there, of course, as to when this stock is going to bottom and you know now that it's hammered down to a, a very you know, uh, cheap PE, so to speak. People are thinking, oh, you know, when is this thing a buy? But notice that on this daily chart of Facebook, it's never ever violated the trend even once, even though it's threatened to. And there was actually an interesting situation here where you had this downtrend. This is the Feb 24 uh, secure low, right? And then you come in and you have this balance area and it sort of bubbles under the trend line. And this is usually a very strong buy signal or at the very least, it's a heads up that a buy is going to be coming soon, uh, that you are about to break trend. But notice how in this particular chart, uh, Facebook is a perfect example here. It doesn't make any sense to try to get ahead of that because it never breaks trend. And then the stock actually moves much lower uh, all the way down uh, to the prior lows. One of the things that you can do as a trader intraday as you are looking to get into a long-term position, and this is a perfect example of that because uh, there's a saying that goes uh, on day one or on entry, every person is a day trader, no matter what their time frame is, even if they are buying a stock for the next five years to put away in an IRA or something. On that particular day, when they are buying the stock, they are a day trader, right? They are operating in the day time frame to go out and purchase that stock. So this is a perfect example of how you can use just a little bit of the tips and tricks and, and sort of uh, expertise of a day trader in order to help you avoid pitfalls like this. And for instance, I'm talking specifically about this area where it breaks the chart. Firstly, in a relatively bearish environment like we are now, don't try to jump the gun and buy ahead of the trend line. Wait until it breaks. The next day, which is the large red bar, it opens above the trend line. You would think normally that would be a screaming buy right on the open. But again, using some day trading expertise, it's very simple to stay out of this sort of trouble and not be that bag holder that's buying on the open of that day and then the stock just falls like a stone from there. It's very simple to do by simply waiting for a few bars to form before buying. I like to use one minute bars, five minute bars, or 15 minute bars, depending on my time frame outlook. If I was looking to buy Facebook on that particular day, I would be looking for a clearance of a high of at least a five minute bar and then add to the position on the first 15 minute bar, okay? And that never happened. You can see that the, the high of the day was basically the open like that. If it's a day time frame trade and I see that there's a trend line break has occurred, and I think, I believe that the stock is going to be up that day, then I would possibly bring that down to only a one minute time frame. Since it's a day trade, I only need to let the first one minute bar form. And when the stock price clears the first one minute bar, then boom, it's off to the races. And I'm not giving up too much by just waiting those 60 seconds. And if my time frame outlook is larger on a daily chart where, for instance, I'm seeing this trend line break and I'm thinking, okay, we could at least go $10 higher to the 20 MA or $20 higher here or however much this distance is here, about $40, right? Then I'm not giving up very much by waiting for that 15 minute bar to form, right? And setting that buy stop above the high of the 15 minute bar. So this is really, really important. The bottom line is, is that you want stocks to always show and prove. They need to prove to you that they are worthy of your dollars. If they're not, there's no point in entering them anyway and just playing the hope card. A lot of people probably did that as they got sucked in here as the stock was bubbling under the trend line and then it opened above trend and then just fell like a stone. Why did that happen? Because those longer term buyers were simply not there. And of course, Facebook also succumbed to what was going on in the broader market, which was bearish and it fell. So going 
forward, this chart is really, really interesting, and I wanted to purposely focus on it uh, for all the reasons that I just said, but also because I'm pointing it out to you because it is going to be a screaming buy at some point. At some point, two things are going to happen. The market is going to stabilize, and it's going to have some sort of an upswing, and this stock is going to break this line. This trend is going to break, and it's been going on for a while, and understand that there is indeed here not only this downtrend but there is also the gap that's above it right we know that the stock gapped down and then since then has been selling off steadily i call this the piling on effect so you have lots of shorts here from where it was okay now gap down and what's the, the direction of the stock it's all just straight down they're constantly piling on so the Inventory position in Facebook is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And eventually that has to, to sort, you know, some of that pressure has to be released. And when is the perfect time when it gets released? Just wait for the line to break. You don't need anything fancy, really. This is why I've been saying that trend lines, if there is such a thing as a holy grail, maybe the trend line is it because they are absolute. You can't argue with it or, or apply your opinion to it. You are either on the downside of the trend line or you are on the upside of the trend line. If you are on the downside, the stock is still in a downtrend and there's no reason to buy it. If it crosses on the other side of the trend line, it is now no longer in a downtrend and there is some reason to buy it. Okay, so keep an eye on this. I know I'm going to be watching very, very closely. I don't know when this is going to break trend and shift gears to the upside, but I'm Again, watching closely, and when it does, I do believe that a lot of this pent-up pressure is going to release into the other direction, and you're going to get a playable uh, up move in Facebook. Keeping with the same theme, let's look at one last example, and this one is Amazon, also in a downtrend, but obviously a much sort of wilder, kind of splashy pattern than Facebook. Facebook is in a very clean downtrend. It's trending absolutely perfectly, just riding that trend line lower. Amazon's a little bit wilder, but in the bigger picture, it also has trend line resistance above it that is not yet broken. And I specifically wanted to talk about this stock in relation to the trend not being broken for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because of what happened in the stock this week. Huge gap up here of a couple hundred bucks. Why? Because they announced they're splitting the stock 20 for one and they're, they also announced a share buyback. Obviously, this is a ploy by the management of Amazon to get the stock price higher because if you've been looking at this equity for a while, it has been in the doldrums. The stock has not been rallying for quite a long time. So obviously the management of the company wants to do something to get it in gear. A stock split is of course very, very bullish as is announcing a buyback. But after that initial pop, what happened? Similar to when I, to showing you that one day a couple weeks ago in Facebook where it gapped up and then fell. Same exact thing on Friday. Notice that the stock basically opened higher on Friday, right at a 20 period moving average, interestingly enough, right at a technical level, and just fell like a stone and closed uh, dead on, on the low. So what is the takeaway from this? The same as Facebook, that if you're gonna look at tech longer term, wait for some of these trends to break. Basically, the trend lines are going to tell you when it's gonna be safe to jump into these pools again, so to speak. But secondly, I thought it was noteworthy to end on this particular chart and talk about Amazon and the fact that you have incredibly bullish news from a stock that has been beaten down and probably has a lot of shorts in it, and yet it still doesn't barely do anything, right? It doesn't have any follow through to the upside. And not that Amazon is any sort of proxy for the market, but I do believe that when I see this type of price action, it tells me a lot about the state of the market and how people feel about equities right now. And the answer is they don't really care. Obviously, they don't really care enough to get them to sustain any sort of meaningful rallies, as we've seen in the broad market uh, this whole week, where it's one day up, one day down. And in, in, inside of each day, you have a large large volatility to the downside, buy it back up, sell off back down. You've got short covering rallies, liquidation breaks. There's just a lot of indecision in the markets. And if it wasn't there, if we were in a, a cleaner, more trending situation, I believe that Amazon would have responded far more positively to that type of news than the way uh, that it did. 
And that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you, as always, for spending a little bit of your weekend with me. So big events on the horizon, most notably the FOMC meeting next week, Wednesday. I think it's going to be a barn burner of an event. Uh, obviously, we know what's going to happen. Uh, question is out there, a little bit of a wild card. Do they get aggressive? Hike it by 50 basis. Uh, more importantly, do they have a press conference after where they talk about potential where, okay, we're going to get, you know, we are going to get more aggressive as time goes on if we can't get a handle uh, on inflation uh, or not. So we shall see. All right. If you enjoy these videos and you like my sort of way that I look at the markets, understand, as I've always said, that I'm only talking to you once a week on the weekend when the market is closed. But if you hit the link down below, shadowchair.net forward slash options, you can get my take on the markets all day long live as I send out alerts and live trades uh, in weekly options that you can follow along with uh, at that link below, shadowtrader.net forward slash uh, options. And again, I keep you abreast of everything. A lot of the things that I talk about in these videos, I talk about during the day uh, by just snapshotting from my platform and sending out uh, to subscribers. You get it in real time uh, straight to your mobile. We have a dedicated uh, mobile app. Uh, and you get it right there along with the trades. And, you know, I'm talking about all this stuff basically in real time. Like, hey, what is this weighted unweighted doing? Do we see, oh, look at this trend line break in the ES. Uh, look at the market internals doing this, that, et cetera. You know, it's just a constant uh, throughout the course of the day alerting people to stuff that I know is salient, that I know is noteworthy. Even if sometimes it's extremely nuanced and that I think is where all the value comes in because after so many years of watching the internals, day in and day out and watching the price action, uh, I'm able to see a lot of nuances that I think a lot of other people don't see. And I'm always trying to alert subscribers to that. And usually those nuances, they basically presage changes in the market, right? You know, where we're about to turn back to the upside or fall off, uh, you know, fall off from a top or whatever. So it's extremely valuable uh, for 49 bucks a month, as I always say, best deal on the street. And again, if you'd like to join me, hit the link down below, shadowtrader.net forward slash options. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I wish you good trading and good night.